The Indonesian Meteorology, Climatology and Geophysics Agency, or BMKG, plays a key role in the 10th World Water Forum in Nusa Dua, Bali. Now, to elaborate on BMKG's role in the 10th World Water Forum, TVRI World's Siska Becker has the honor to converse with the head of BMKG, Ibu Dwi Korita Karnawati. The Indonesian Meteorology, Climatology and Geophysics Agency, or BMKG, plays a key role in the 10th World Water Forum, not only in preparing and organizing the event and providing valuable insights in a number of high-level panel discussions, but the BMKG, for the success of the event, has been mitigating the weather changes throughout the event to make sure that the event runs smoothly. Now, to know more and elaborate more of the role of BMKG in the 10th World Water Forum, I have the honor and privilege of conversing with the head of BMKG, and dare I say, one of the superstars of the 10th World Water Forum, Ibu Dwi Korita Karnawati. Hello, Ibu Dwi Korita. Hello, Such an Asiska. honor. Yeah, I'm really honored to be here with <laughs> all of you. Yeah. I understand you have a packed schedule, so your time here is truly appreciated. And then furthermore, I would like to congratulate you and the whole BMKG team for the success of the weather changes scheme because the weather has been absolutely perfect from day one of the forum until now. <laughs> right. Yes, indeed. Thank you for that. Well, uh, to be frankly, we, we have uh, made some forecasting oh, okay. prior to the event prior to the, uh, yes, to the event on the 19th and 20th of May, mm. because uh, night at night, uh, in the evening of 19, uh, there was a gala dinner, and in the morning of 20th, uh, there was a, a mangrove plantation. Yes. It should be outdoors, all. Mm. So we, we must keep the rain, it's not, <laughs> coming yeah. down yes yeah. that's true so it's, that's that's the philosophy behind mm, okay. and what we did uh, we tried to apply the weather uh, modification uh, technology uh, in collaboration with the uh, minister of public works and housing yeah. as well as with the uh, 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 BNPB yes. uh, yeah national agency for disaster and also the the army, the air force, the okay. air force, because wow. the, it must be done by seeding the clouds wow. using the natrium chloride, uh, which is uh, uh, spread okay. uh, by the air aircraft. I see. And aircraft is, is is prepared by the army, and also. Uh, uh, supported also by uh, one of the private sectors. Right. Yeah. Is so the, uh, we we try to to uh, to make the clouds to uh, to be seeded to become the rain before entering oh. the zone of the event. Okay. Uh, the zone of the venue. Yes. So yes, there are still clouds. And the rain may occur okay. with the intensity of light, mm. yeah, light intensity up to moderate. So we, we, we must uh, drop that down earlier before the starting time okay. and beyond or outside of the wow. venue. Wow, that sounds absolutely fascinating. Thank you, Ibu, for explaining to me how it actually works, the weather engineering scheme using the weather modification technology. Now, before I ask more about that technology and how it helps Indonesia's position here at the forum and more about also your agenda here at the forum, mm -hmm. I would like to first go back to 2004 right. when the great Indian Ocean tsunami yeah. happened and wiped yeah. out Aceh. Yeah. At that time, we didn't have any early warning system. Of course. And yeah. as a Indeed. result, Indeed. hundreds of thousands of lives were lost. Yeah. Now, Ibu, we go to now, 20 years later in 2024, mm -hmm. How has the improvement been done for early warning system in Indonesia? Well, there has been quite a tremendous improvement, not only in terms of the technology, but also in terms of the socio, uh, socio-cultural. Okay. In terms of technology, uh, 20 years ago, we didn't have any system at all. 
we only have a limited numbers of detector uh, seismograph yeah. because the the earthquake can be considered as the early warning of tsunami mm. so that's why we need the seismograph to detect the earthquake yeah. then when we detect the earthquake we can start to uh, to analyze whether the earthquake will induce the tsunami or not okay. so that's the system of the early warning it was not available at all and now mm. we have such system earlier uh, in the 2005 we only have 20 uh, numbers of seismograph okay. now it's almost 600 oh, wow. uh, so it's quite rapid, quite significant uh, changes uh, very then. very significant mm tremendous improvement okay. and also the technology is also has been equipped with artificial intelligence okay. big data and also uh, social engineering that yes. means integration about uh, integration of technology and the local community we do uh, s some community literacy community education community preparedness and we are not working alone. It is impossible the early warning system only uh, uh, conducted by the single agency. Okay. Uh, we work in collaboration for the community empowerment mm. with the local government, with the national agency for disaster management, with the universities, with uh, uh, NGO. Yes. So there has been a lot of concern uh, in this collaboration. But still, we need to learn more because actually nowadays we realize uh, the tsunami not only be induced by the earthquake okay. but can also uh, induce by uh, like by submarine landslide oh, and wow. also by uh, volcanic eruption yes. that two last inducement we still we still need to work harder mm. still challenge for us it's it's not yet really ready for that so All we right. need to strengthen in the uh, uh, community side when the technology is not yet really uh, 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 powerful there we must uh, strengthen the community or uh, the, the local wisdom in order to compensate that uh, 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 limitation of such technology all right, thank you Ibu for sharing with us those encouraging improvements. Now to go back to your agenda here at the forum, Indonesia is the biggest archipelago country in the world with a very unique geological landscape and topography which offers a unique set of challenges when it comes to water management issues, particularly in mitigating natural disasters. Mm -hmm. Now how does Indonesia offer their expertise and knowledge to other countries attending the 10th World Water Forum, Ibu? Yes, indeed. Uh, we are proposing, of course, provoking and <laughs> proposing okay. the establishment of Center of Excellence. Okay. So it is not the new Center of Excellence. It is just a new branding mm. for the al Alliance. Alliance uh, yes, alliance or hub of existing center of excellence. Okay. That means we would like to uh, to coordinate, to take uh, a hub, uh, to, to play a role as a hub of various existing center of excellences related the, with the water and climate in the region, not mm. only in, the, in Indonesia, but also in ASEAN, in uh, Pacific Island, as yes. well as in the South, in, in Af Africa. So through that center of excellences, we can have a, like a exchange of experiences, exchange of knowledge, co-development, co-design co, uh, co of any innovative technology, any research and also uh, co-creation in any uh, uh, capacity development programs so we are not work, uh, alone and to ask others to follow us not only that but we work together mm -hmm. equally okay. to develop a, a product which is needed in a common sense within the regions 
Okay, so. you, you were actually one of the key speakers in a high-level panel discussion that talks about the importance of collaboration and coordination between countries in natural disaster mitigation, especially in early warning system. Right. Now, maybe you can update us a bit after that high panel discussion. Is there any bilateral or even multilateral agreements that has been reached between the countries? Uh, actually, earlier we, we have we have been uh, conducted collaboration uh, earlier with Oman, that's a country with need to have early warning system but not yet uh, capable to provide so we advise and support Oman yeah okay. and now uh, that was early warning system for tsunami okay nowadays uh, due to the climate change uh, there are more and more frequent uh, extreme weathers with okay. higher intensities and longer duration struck uh, many countries surrounding Indonesia. So uh, we also have a, some uh, agreement under the World Meteorological Organization to support small islands. Mm. For instance, uh, uh, Pacific Islands like uh, Fiji, yes. Papua New Guinea and uh, uh, several other countries, Seychelles. Yeah, so it, it, it is in the process of uh, okay. collaboration, still right. ongoing process. We also heard that the delegation from Tunisia is right. also very impressed yeah. with the uh, weather modification technology yeah. used yeah. by Indonesia. Yeah. Could there yeah. be also a collaboration between Indonesia course, and Tunisia? Of course, uh, uh, under the Minister of Public Works, yes. because uh, uh, from Tunisia is the Minister of Agriculture oh. and Hydrology. Yes. And from Indonesian side is the Minister of Public Works and we, we, we involve in, in that collaboration but that not for early warning system that for uh, especially for the uh, weather modification technology okay right. so Ibu, furthermore water we can all agree that it is a cross-sectoral issue and it affects all aspects of life therefore the political will of the heads of state that attends would be very crucial in making sure that any resolutions that come yeah. out of the forum can turn into policy making that truly really affects the lives of the people that are affected right. yeah. by climate change and water related issues. Indeed. Now from your experience so far in the forum, how optimistic are you that those resolutions, if they come about, will turn into policies, Ibu? So the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, take the lead in the diplomacy because mm -hmm. it is not only about the declaration, it is about uh, transferring the science-based uh, science-based recommendation to become science-based policy yes. with a political uh, a political uh, binding mm. so it needs diplomacy yeah okay. not only about science discussion <laughs> And it was really exciting uh, process <laughs> and uh, luckily uh, we really thanks to God that uh, we Indonesia managed to handle that and the ministerial declaration uh, related to uh, mm -hmm. water for shared prosperity yes. for others yeah, uh, can be uh, 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 delivered and some def deliverable action mm. also has been prepared as the follow-up mm. actions. One deliverable action is the establishment of center of excellence on the water and water and climate resilience. And then the second deliverable is the establishment of integrated water resources management group. And the third is the uh, commitment to launch the Water Lake Day and uh, finally is the Compendium project that's uh, uh, about more than 100 project commitments okay. has been uh, like uh, has been uh, committed as the follow-up action uh, uh, after this World Water Forum. All right, those are encouraging updates. We surely hope that the heads of state attending the forum yeah. will provide strong leadership Indeed. to address the water Indeed. challenges in yeah. the world. 
Ibu Dikorita, the last question I have for you to conclude our conversation, your hopes and wishes for the 10th World Water Forum here in Bali. Yes, uh, we do hope that this 10th World Water Forum is not only the media for meeting, but it is the platform to implement all commitments, science-based policy commitments. So it is not scientific meeting, but it is science-based policy commitments by addressing the needs of the regions not only talk about the global mm. but also the regions okay. so I wish they can really uh, influencing uh, how the world can be much better in the way how we mitigate the potential water crisis in the near future Ibu Thank you. we share those hopes and wishes. Thank you so much Thank for your you. time and valuable insights. All the best for the rest of your time here at the 10th World Water Forum. Thank you, Ibu. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's the end of my eye-opening interview with Ibu Dwi Korita Karnawati, the head of BMKG in Indonesia. I'm Siska Becker for TV RI World. <laughs>